Okay, hi guys. Uh, this is the uh, last lecture of the Kim Mouse, which is lecture number eight. In this lecture, I will uh, I will go through some some concepts and techniques about uh, how you should properly draw your PCB. However, this lecture is not about teaching you how to use the eagle. It's not about how to, how to use the eagle, but it's based on uh, it's based on assumption that you already know the eagle. Then the uh, other than just some like, very basic techniques uh, you know, I'm just giving you some uh, more details and advanced technique in order to help you to draw a more uh, more legit, legitimate and uh, advanced and professional uh, uh, PCB for micro mouse uh, based on our encoder motor uh, solutions. So, okay, the first part is the components, components placement. <laughs> uh, since uh, you guys are playing with the kit mouse that, that uh, we're providing, is use a particular type of the uh, model mount and the model encoder and the wheel type. So uh, this part is predetermined. That's why we're providing this this eagle library. So all you need to do is add this library uh, in the in the schematic. Then switch to, to the board part. Then you will see this this, this kind of shape uh, inside your board. And uh, by telling you the location uh, for for uh, for model and model mount and wheels. For instance. This is a motor, this is a motor mount, this is wheels, and this is a boundary, uh, this is boundary for uh, where you should draw the outline for your mouse. So this part is determined for the wheel part uh, to, to help you not to uh, have your wheel like overlapping with PCB. Yeah, the question was physical board, would that be like a, that would be, you want that to be a cut off? Yeah, this will be cut off. That's why this is a, this is a directing. This is a dimension, this is a, okay. this is a dimension layer. Dimension layer. So all you need to do is okay. I, I'll I'll mention this later. So all you need to just just like have a wire. I have an, another wire for dimension layer starting from here. Like draw shape to front and ends here for the front, and I have a wire here, draw shape here, and it ends here. So make a close loop. So this part is already connected, and this is shape for wheel is actually on the top place here. Their color is similar, but once you hide the top place here, you can only see the boundary. So don't worry about this. Okay, so in order to simplify your drawing process, I highly recommend you to place <coughs> your components in, in the physical middle, in the physical, uh, I mean, in, into the into the, in the physical uh, into the middle of of the of the <coughs> system by placing your coordinates of the, this library to the uh, co uh, coordinates zero zero because I on purpose make the origin of this 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 library uh, in the middle, physically middle, so. And this is a zero zero. This is also the zero zero location for your for your board, for your entire entire board system. So you make these two match. In this case, uh, so why why you want to make some any any symmetrical parts? For instance, a sensor at the left, a sensor at the right. You want it completely symmetrical, right? So you don't have to just like use use mouse to drag them around to make okay use eyes like like. Optic, you know, manually observe them to make them, uh, make them like symmetrical to each other. Instead, you can just like enter the uh, the coordinates, pretty much same coordinates with different signs to make sure they're like perfectly symmetrical. You know, something like that. That's why I recommend you draw a guideline in the middle. Okay, to help you to determine if the per, the part should be placed in the middle or not, and. Uh, <coughs> Uh, also, uh, <coughs> because the uh, the library is drawn in uh, in milli uh, the the units I draw the, the library is in millimeter. So when you're placing the same and drawing out layer, uh, trying to change your uh, the unit grid unit grid to uh, from the default one to to one millimeter. So that will be much easier to for you to uh, to draw it out layer. So this is what I mentioned. <laughs> And after you place the power position, you draw the proper shape for the front and back. I mean, each one has different preference for shape, right? It doesn't, doesn't, it's not as we have to be run into the front. You can literally have like trapezoid shape here, right? Like straight, like 45 degrees, then straight, whatever, right? And they have, have, doesn't, have, have, doesn't have to have this cut off at the end. Just make rectangular, like, whatever. Or around the corner, it's up to you. <coughs> All that matters is <coughs> you should leave sufficient lens to the front. Make sure your sensor will point to the position you want to, especially for a side sensor. And uh, uh, don't make the front extremely long enough back. I mean, in this case, this is, this is okay. Otherwise, your 
uh, it, I mean, it's a little bit like the weight wise, it's a little, a little bit unbalanced. And uh, if you plan to place your battery on the back, make sure it leaks sufficient. Um, make sure you pre measure our battery size and uh, make sure you have sufficient uh, place for the battery. Make sure these two are, are monolog, where uh, will be like lifted. So your battery will not likely be placed around these two areas. So you, you should not place your battery here, but like, place the battery starting from this line and getting anywhere behind this thing. You can also uh, decide to place your battery to your front, but you should plan your uh, like weight, weight balance ahead of time. So, yeah. Uh, oh, also make sure your, your overlands don't not exceeding 100 millimeters because the, just literally just a price costing. <coughs> because uh, the usually the size that we're, we're choosing for the PCB for micro mouse is 10 centimeter by 10 centimeter. Uh, I mean, for width wise, it's, it's always you know not going to exceed it, but mostly for lengths, it's it's it pretty, it's like usually 90 uh, 90 something uh, millimeter. So for our kit mouse, actually, it's the lens is exactly. Uh, 100 millimeter, simply because of the uh, the, the cost limitation. If it's beyond uh, 10 millimeter, the next level war will be 10 by 15 uh, centimeter lens, and cost will be raised at least for 10 bucks, at least. So try to avoid that. Uh, longer board also give you more weight, right? Okay, so <laughs> the next step you want, next thing you want to draw, draw before you place the parts <coughs> is the guidelines. So you can see, uh, because we know for two wheel micro mouse, <coughs> the rotational center is always on the motor shaft. And uh, for my case, I, I would like to draw a line that indicates the center of the cell and place a motor shaft on it, right? Or where your rotational center is. For, for two wheel micro mouse, it is exactly the motor, right? For four wheel micro mouse, it's a little bit too far. So you just place your rotational center, whatever it is, on this middle line. Right, then draw an additional cell to the front because you, you might need to want to determine how far your front sensor is going to be. So, this is for front sensor and this is for like uh, side sensor. And these two are for the case that you're you planning your mouse for the wrong diagonal. <coughs> so, these, uh, so these, these two posts <coughs> are this is the full post during the diagonal uh, between two cells. And uh, so uh, this this means once your mouse is the center of the one that you know, you should be able the, the, the sensor should read like behind some certain post. Otherwise, it won't you you won't be able to detect post. So I'll mention this in the next next slide. But uh, if you're not planning to <coughs> uh, make diagonal for for a short term, then you don't need to draw these these lines and these posts. But you should at least draw this one. The basic one, and to make sure the the thickness of the wall is 1.2 millimeter, which means the, which means this is the set, this is the boundary of the cell, and the half this is a, the middle line is boundary of the cell, right? So the half of the thickness is 0 0.6 millimeter. Uh, so uh, the half of the half the half of the thickness of the wall is 6 millimeter. So make sure the center line is a boundary inside this or this side. Okay, use the question. Um, oh yeah, was it the 180 millimeters? Is that from the center of the wall to the center of the wall? Yeah, good question. Center is the center of the line to the center of the line. I mean, what was the thing about the posts? So are those Which poster posts in the middle? Are those like imaginary posts? Then you like okay. Uh, uh, these are posts for the diagonal. Why are you doing diagonal? Yeah. Like, so you your your path getting narrow, right? So these are where exactly the post post locates. Where are these posts? Like the physical. Yeah, I mean, imagine it, you know, it's not mass. You know, imagine. I know, but like, like, as because like they're closer than the actual walls, like. Um, yeah, because that well, yeah, diagonal, right? Uh -huh. It's it's much narrower. You know, it should uh -huh. have less, less much less uh -huh. space, right? Yeah. I'm just showing the oh, physical okay. location. Okay. But I'm pretty sure you guys won't be able to make a diagonal because <laughs> diagonal is, isn't about action because you you will be make able to make 180, 135, 45 degree, 90 degree easily. With the simulation file, all that matters is to write a system to organize, uh, to generate sequence of the commands and organize and utilize these these, these actions one by one. It's, it's it's a little bit complicated. That's the hard part. So, 
okay. Okay, I think I might miss a lecture about where you exactly your censorship plays to. Okay, okay, it's here. Okay, I'll skip this on first. So where your censorship point to? Uh, the reason we draw those guidelines is because uh, for the side sensor, right, for the diagonal sensor, when your mouse is at the center cell, you want your size to point to a little bit to the to the boundary of the cell. Because we detect the open, assume the one doesn't exist, the mouse will detect open, right? So the mouse have exact, exactly half cell tolerance, either overshooting or undershooting. So, <coughs> uh, but I don't recommend you to bend your size center too much to the front because, because that's only because I drew those, uh, those posts for the diagonal rod. Uh, because this is the post that if you make a 90 degree V turn, and uh, where your size has been point to, so that's that's only for V turn for the for the uh, for the, uh, for the diagonal rod. So if if you just make a V turn uh, and exit at the proper position, your sensor should read this, and then you should read, you, you need to detect the diagonal post to uh, to correct its longitudinal position. That's why I on previously placed the reading of sense of range of this behind this post. Otherwise, it won't be able to read this post. That's a really tricky part. But you can still draw this, uh, draw this, draw this pulse. I mean, just for later reference, you know, because just in case you want to do the uh, dialing in the future. But even though you're doing the right, you're not doing that right now. Uh, it's going to have this. Or if you don't want draw this, just make sure your uh, your size is is a little, a little bit exceeding the the uh, the pulse at the regular places. So if, if you ignore this, right, you're, then, then just make sure size is a little bit exceeding this, this position. That'll be fine. So you shouldn't worry too much about that. For the front sensor, <coughs> uh, you don't really want your front sensor point is straight to the front because, I mean, if you want to run diagonal, you want your front sensor to be able to detect this post a little bit earlier than side sensor because it can see further, right? So if you're bending straight, it won't be able to, whenever the mouse is a little bit off on the center, it won't be able to read this post. So if it, right, because theoretically, if the mouse goes straight, mouse is going straight on diagonal line, the front sensor should not read anything from the post at all, right? Because it's not in the range, but as long as the mouse is a little bit off on the center, this one will have a little overlap with the post, so it will read a little bit thing, then use that arrow to make the mouse push to the other side a little bit. So that's the strategy. Uh, that's how it helps. How it can help the mouse to keep straight in diagonal. You know, is this one of the way to do it? But the mouse really rely on this one. But this one does help earlier than the side. And, and, and uh, the other thing you need to mention <coughs> about angle bending hours for the front sensor. <coughs> Make sure you don't bend too much. The more you bend, the more you like to read the post in diagonal. However, if you bend too much, <coughs> and if you're seeing a really far range. Your front sensor might point to this side. Yeah, go ahead. So, in the case where if your cone is like partially on the post and partially like part, part like the post is partially on the cone and then you're reaching for the angle, just like just in your viewing angle, right? Like you see a little bit of the oh post. the cone, yes. Like let's, let's say you see some of like the uh, post and then some of like the wall behind you. Is your reading going to your corresponding reading going to be corresponding to the Distance to the post, or like somewhere in between, like the post and the. You mean front sensor or side sensor? It's just any sensor. Uh. Like if you just point it at the wall, it, your value corresponds to like that distance to the wall. Right? Yes. But if you have part of a post in. That will correspond to the overlapping area, so uh -huh. that it will correspond to both distances in the area. Okay, so it will be like somewhere in between. If it was just pointing directly at the post and directly at the wall. Yes. So that's why seeing the mouse in the middle, and if there's a wall here and if there's a post here, the reading for the post, the peak reading of the post is much is lower than when one's available because because the viewing angle is not make is not making the post fully covered. That's why the peak reading for the post is lower than than the wall. Unless your cone angle is really small, much smaller than than the, the post itself, then it, then the mouse can make no difference between the post and the wall. Otherwise, for most cases, for my mouse, it have difference. 
but these are software and we need, we need to compensate. Oh, remember <coughs> for this picture, the mouse is being placed one point cell, cells, <coughs> one, point, one and a half cells away. <coughs> because this is a threshold I want two mouse to determine if there's a wall. So, <coughs> uh, for instance, whenever mouse, uh, I mean, this is a threshold I'm using for determining the mouse wall, even though my mouse is updating the cell here. I'm updating from sensor here, from wall here. Yeah. And when you're saying half cell, you mean. Like the axis of the motor is in the axis. Yes, that's what, I, what I'm always referring to. Okay, let's go through this page. Uh, <coughs> okay, so after you draw, uh, draw all those outlines, <coughs> you have those components. So, next step, you should go hide your uh, air wall, <coughs> then place those components in a proper position. But before you place them, you should, you should carefully think of what will the potentially those chairs are going from or going to, to in order to uh, minimize the amount of crossovers and VS to simplify the process. For instance, if you have MCUs here, and uh, most of, if the most of analog devices, uh, because uh, <coughs> for instance, most of the analog pins are on this side and this side, and uh, you should try to place your most of analog device on this side and this side instead. So most of wires will go straight up here, here, without like going backwards or you know crossing some other areas. Makes it much simpler. And uh, that's why I put the uh, the communication port here because uh, FTDI port and uh, program port or FTDI port are here, program port are here. So they're like really close to the to the communication port. At least the close I can be. And uh, because because there's a lot of timer things. Here, that's why I made model make facing downwards and have been the really close to the model. So, I mean, for the button things and, and any digital pin, so it doesn't really determine the, the orientation of the MCU. Right, that's that's also the reason I put the uh, screen here because there happened to be a uh, SPI port here, so I can see the hand wire go here really easy. That's a reason. So, if you have this uh, predetermined ahead of time. Before you start wiring, it will make your life a lot of years easier. That's why the hardest stuff for PC is not wiring, it's the components placement. So, assuming the time you spend on running your PCB is, uh, is 100, then you should at least spend 70% of the time thinking of the placement and, and the, in, the, in, the, in the interconnections of the wires before you join the wires. Okay, next part of the PCB join. So since uh, I think uh, most of ours are using Eagle, uh, th these are my preference, but I think this is really, really useful for you. And uh, before you do that, you should do some setting, uh, uh, design rule settings in your board part. So uh, there's a may maybe two parts. First thing, when you, uh, like I mentioned, <coughs> when you join outlier for your for your mouse, right? This this, this slides. I try to switch to the, the one millimeter grip because the, the library is joining one millimeter so it will be easy to like have the wires connected easily, right? But once you start to draw the parts, I suggest you to switch one mil grip with the with a with a grid display <coughs> because the unit of the trace are male. And uh, the mix makes it much easier for you to determine the exact thickness. Because you should and uh, and determine the spacing. Because sometimes you should literally count in the grids. Okay, how much if you have like some place like you know, some place have a lot of shades, but you have, you have to put it really close. But you, but you you still do, still want to keep the minimal trace dis uh, distance. So what you need to do, you might just count the grids. Okay, if it's like count eight grids, it's okay. I have eight mil left. It's the same. That's why I suggest you to have put one mil grids. Well, put a one mil per grid and display grid. That'll be really useful. And the other thing is. Uh, the mass, uh, <clears throat> you know, for instance, uh, can I have this off? Uh, as you can see, uh, we have some VS here. These VS have you have you have you can see this is shiny, shiny, shiny tin. I mean solder on uh, you know, a shiny solder on uh, on the on the surface. That means it's not masked because <laughs> I make a VS really large. 
and to make the pad part uh, is not masked by the uh, by the solder mask. That's why it's it, it's called exposed. Uh, this is uh, this should be uh, the reason I did this is uh, on purpose to make keep it keep it exposed. See, check here to increase the thermal performance. Okay. Yeah. This is where it's like those holes that have nothing. Yeah, this, these are vias. Uh -huh. These are vias, but I'm purposely expose them and make them large. Okay. And then the, the pad part large with the tanks uh -huh. to increase the thermal performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. However, for signal wise, I make a really small vias. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot, lot of a uh, lot of small vias here. Uh, you can actually see it because even though there's a pad, it's being masked by the, those kind of green, greenish paint stuff. It's called a solder mask, so it's being masked. So uh, because of the signal, right? It's it's kind of noise sensitive, so it helps to just you know uh, isolate the uh, any any you know static charge or any noise from the from the from the environment. From the, from the environment. That's why we should make design at the first place. First thing, the default setting for the eagle, they give you extra size of of mask. Uh, I mean that's good for the hobbyist level because. They make a map, they can make because they you know they do hand solder every time, no matter SMD or solo. The larger pad make them solder easier. However, since we're using smaller scale parts like O4 or two resistor, the uh, place components likely closer. So large pad will actually <coughs> make it really hard to solder, especially on really close up parts. So <coughs> so we just first get rid of the extra solder pads. Uh, so by giving minimal and uh, maximum zero uh, zero mil extra uh, pads by making the percentage one hundred by just simply follow the same I showed the picture and uh, this is the first step second step <coughs> is uh, make the threshold so I set the limit to twelve mil means if the via is greater than twelve mil that you have you have exposed the pad if it's smaller or equal to twelve mil means the pad will be masked like the signal signal uh, uh, vias that we're having. That's that's quite important because uh, that's actually how I burned the MC off my first four wheel micro mouse because I didn't have my signal shares mask and uh, I accidentally touched the touched the, the PCB on the Mr. MC area. Uh, when I was downloading code it was just burned. So yeah, I don't want this uh, this tragedy to happen again. So I'm just just that's why you should should not have the mask for those for this uh, signal VS. Not make, at least not make some exposed. Uh, okay, let's talk about thi uh, chain thickness. So our MC uses STM, STM32 uh, F405 R RG, which is a typical LQFP uh, kind of package MCU. And uh, <coughs> LQFP package have the pin leads on the four sides, and the width is, is predetermined with uh, some sort of standard. Uh, for the library we, we, we're providing, the, the trace width, <coughs> the maximum trace width is 12 mil, <coughs> and for some other library, it might have 10 mil. <coughs> That's why I was saying the trace width for the LQFP package are 10 to 12 mil. So when you join the trace, make sure your trace is not wider than the package provided. Otherwise, you are either overlapping with the pin next to it, or point is, because the bottleneck is here. So, however, you should still try your maximum trace width. Available maximum trace with 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 uh, with the with the uh, MCU because <coughs> for power and analog signal related trace we still want them as thick as possible. However, for digital ones, for instance, like just like like the button one or the one you turn on turning on of LED or even the one you drop the SPI, it doesn't have like maximum trace like 12 mil. <coughs> uh, I prefer you also save save the space. Like you can even use 10 mil. I even saw one guy, uh, the, the guy, you know, the, the micro mouse player, uh, David Otten uh, from MIT, he told me he's even have a chase for four meals. I was like, the first time I heard that, it's, it's like, wow, I can't believe it. It's like, really, think, is it okay? He said, yeah, it's okay, it's still working. So, yeah, I mean, uh, but <coughs> the manufacturer have its minimal trace with uh, limitations. So, I remember it's like four meals. So, but, <laughs> Unless you're running out of space, otherwise no charge. Not trying to make trace like two things like four mil. Okay, for the uh, the second part for the for the trace thickness. Uh, well, other than the thin trace, 
we have some other place you can go much much thicker chips. <coughs> For instance, like this. But this is a battery jack. This is a, this power switch. In this case, because <coughs> this is a battery jack, have the main power with V battery go through, right? Which have the most of all the power consumption go through this line. Once once it come comes out from the from the power switch, right? So this chain should be the thickest theoretically. Because they have odd power go through. That's why you should draw a thicker chase. So what I do, I, I at least draw 70 mils for those chases. And uh, make them as thick as possible. Uh, in addition, see this area? Uh, <coughs> I mean, because I can't make like 70 mil all, all over the place because you have some other thick mils over this place. But I might want to go out this area. <coughs> I can make a polygon for this network. <laughs> Make this area like thicker for for a while, so uh, it doesn't it doesn't reduce the resistance all the way, but it, it does help spreading the heat because your your thickest chip is definitely going to have most of heat, right? Well, it doesn't have most of heat concentrated, but it has most of most of the power go through, so it, it won't be cool. It won't be likely to have so cool. Try to make a white. Okay, so that's why I'm saying polygon may needed to give more area of power chase for thermal performance. <laughs> if you take a look up the <coughs> the back of the mouse PCB, you will see this kind of features. Okay, uh, the chase style. Uh, well, obviously, a lot of people who are who are drawing PCB for their doing this their micro mouse, and, and uh, I don't really like the their their chasing style uh, for most of them because. It doesn't mean it's not gonna work. It's just because the it's they uh their change uh their change style is is not really meeting certain kind of, certain sort of uh, like requirement or like even if not just for performance, not even looking and looking. Uh, so here I'm just mentioning a couple examples, single examples. Uh, there's only for your case, you only the only thing you need to watch worry. Uh, <clears throat> first is as short as possible. If you can shorter, don't go wrong. Right? Pretty obvious. Why? Shorter chase, shorter, smaller resistance. Right? And if it's a high speed signal chase, then mass, mass delay. Uh, last turn possible. Uh, I somehow don't have this thing, this one definitely have, have the first priority. If these two things come together, this, this should, should, should always be true at first place. For example, there are two, two, uh, <coughs> two pictures. So, uh, this one has last turn, right? There's only one turn, right? But it's have two turns, right? But which one's shorter? The left one or right one? Right one, right? So because it's like the first rule is high priority, that's why, that's why I say this is bad, this is good. But that doesn't mean <laughs> this is bad. But really bad. I mean, it doesn't mean like your chips are burn or have a lot, of, a lot of heat accumulated. No, because because our micro mouse is not not running like like DSP speed or extreme extremely high uh, processing speed. Uh, so even if you draw like this one, it's still gonna work. Won't have a big issue. But <coughs> style wise, this one looks much better, but better looking because <coughs> when people are judging your PCB, is that. <laughs> Uh, they, they might just first look at your PCB. <coughs> the first thing, before they can see the performance, they might see the style, right? To judge, okay, if you're doing this professionally or not. So, having this, okay? The, the third thing you worry is the end of the turns. Okay, so try and avoid 90 degree turns, okay? But have 45 degrees instead. So, which means <coughs> you, that best one you should choose is 45 degrees. You, you shouldn't even have 135 degrees. It means have a chip like go here, then uh, like, like, like go here, then go back. Like this. Unless you have multiple chase joints to one point, and it's not, not a critical high speed signal chase, then you can do that. Otherwise, keep 45 degrees. Uh, for the, uh, okay, for the professional level, the reason they keep 45 degrees all over the place, other than the looking, is because the average chase wave. Uh, let's take a look. It was 90 degree, right? 
<coughs> the chase waist actually is much wider here, right? Because on the other, on the on the on eagle cat, they make the corner rounded. But if you, it, but <coughs> in the real world, <coughs> if the chase is is a nine degree angle, then the width here, okay, the width here is the width, right? But the width here at the corner is our suit is the short short angle. The waist is like right here to here, which is slightly longer. It's 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 a square root of two. Right? If it's the width of this one, then the width of this is square root of two, which is 1.414. So <coughs> if for the high uh, for the <coughs> for the critical high speed signal, then you it's you, you should really need to keep your uh, chase width the same all over the place instead of have a different width. That's why it matters for the high speed signal, but for our case probably not. That's why they choose 45 because the chase width difference is much, much less at a 45. Right? Can you imagine that? It's just job geometry. Uh, which that means that it has less resistance because it has a shorter. If you talk about resistance, I assume this this one this one have exact same length, okay? This one have less resistance because the width at this part is is actually wider. But that's not our concern, right? Because concern, I'm saying it's okay. It's either one, except this one looks better. But for high speed signal, this one will give even more even width width. Right? At, at all odd place, which give a more even uh, e like EMC performance. But then these are like overkill. But just saying for this one, you should do that because it's not just shorter, it's better looking. Okay, uh, for the VIA, let's start from small VIA. That there, we were saying the mid, uh, the, the, that's what I'm suggesting for our signal chase VIA, and it's a tall mil VIA. 12 via, uh, 12 mil, 12 mil drill size uh, <laughs> on mask via, because then the design will any via smaller or equal to 12 via, it will not have a mask automatically. So as I have as said, via, via drill size equal 12, you will have a really good on uh, on mask via. And remember, I think for the IT studio, uh, the smallest via drill size is 12. So just. For signal chase via, make 12 mil, okay? Drills 12 mil. And then if it has a have a mask, you can, you'll, you'll be able to see it. If you enable the, the top stop layer, you'll be able to see a mask here. <coughs> so it's good for signal chase. Uh, it also save your place, especially like the place have a lot of chase, the smaller via will you know have help you to have more chase go through. Now let's have a large via. I mean, other than the smaller via, the large via, as I want to show earlier, so the reason for large via is simple just for thermal performance to help spread the heat much faster. And uh, <coughs> in this case, <coughs> it should not be masked because uh, the masking material will stop the, the metal spreading heat. So, having exposed the metal pad will definitely spread the heat much faster than this mask. So, these. These are some techniques you can use for VIA. Because if this pad, the red is the top layer, right? If it's a pad as a chip, we need to go bottom. But but running out of space around this area, you can you can just put this <coughs> put this V on the pad as long as it's not too large. <coughs> for instance, you can put this 12 mil drill V on the pad and make a VIA that have a blue wire go bottom. So the wire will be lead out easily. As I have enough space between the pads, right? This is a really good strategy. You can save a lot of space, but it won't work on the LQ, uh, on the MCU because the distance between MCU pins are too short. They only are like eight mils, so there's no place, no no distance you can place the via on the pad, but like somewhere inside the MCU or somewhere outside. So, and for that, some some components have large pad. For instance, like <coughs> power regulator, uh, motor driver chips. <coughs> These pads <coughs> is much more width, so if you're running out of space, you can put a V on the pad. Okay. And then the hole will be that big, so you will still be able to uh, to solder the solder the components on the pad. You see. So <coughs> this kind of large wheel will be placed on those part with a lot of heat. For instance, <coughs> like five volts regulator and a motor driver, pretty much these two places. Okay, so polygon. Uh, 
I believe some of you took the ops program, and I believe uh, when in the joint PCB section, they just simply teach you, okay, just put a ground polygon all over the place, right? So you don't have a draw to chase, right? I mean, it, it will work, but for for a, for a more performance uh, oriented uh, project like Micro Mouse <coughs> or high speed uh, uh, high performance Micro Mouse, this method is actually wrong. The first thing is that don't do it. Okay, don't do it. It's not just giving you a lot of trouble, you know, to make, make a trace. It will, it will actually reduce your performance for some certain components by <coughs> by increasing more noise and you know uh, reduce the uh, accuracy of ADC converting. Uh, why? Because the the most of the reason is because it will transfer heat. If I have a <coughs> have a big polygon for entire PCB all over the place, what that means? It means because polygon is worth is is copper, right? So you have all the <coughs> all the parts generates a lot of heat, with the part uh, are heat sensitive that connected together. So it will transfer the heat from a uh, transfer heat to temperature sensitive components from a heat sensitive a heat intensive components uh, easy. That that's why I have an example in, in the later slides to show you uh, why you should avoid this. Uh, so you should, that's why you should place polygon selectively. That's why I always tell people only on those parts generates a lot of heat. For instance, like five volts regulator or water driver, or the parts are sensitive with temperature. For instance, MCU. I put a large polygon on both sides of the MCU under the MCU because you don't want MCU being too hot because you have ADC components inside. Can ready your analog read. Even though you make your analog power supply really clean, <coughs> but <coughs> you should know your ADC uh, sample values actually will be changed based on temperature. That's why you should keep keep your MCU as cool as possible as long as your MCU is running within some temperature range. Uh, you have a really pretty stable ADC reading. Really. Yeah. Okay, so this is one sample. This is a model driver. You can tell this, you know, level shifter, H bridge, capacitor, the pins for all that. <coughs> I put this place, right, with the uh, polygon both top and the, and the bottom for model ground and the model VCC. Either one you prefer. Uh, pr it's better to be model ground. Uh, if you don't have connection motor ground, you can do motor VCC as well. So, <coughs> as I have sufficient space for sufficient space of copper, right? We can spread heat much faster. So that's why this chase I make a detour instead of go across this heat area because <coughs> some some high speed signal chase might be sensitive for the, for the, for the with the temperature. Uh, for instance, like maybe because we have an encoder chase go through, so that's why I don't want the encoder chase to go through here. So to uh, affect the accuracy of encoder reading, even though it's digital, I mean just for safety precautions. Uh, the second example is polygon for five volts regulated <coughs> on the MCU. So as I mentioned, for our case, for a power regulator and MCU are quite close. I didn't intentionally put placing close, but they're not like that close, but relatively close. And the five volts regulator is hot, that's why I put polygon on it selectively, right? To help spread heat. But this is a temperature sensitive component. That's why I also put the component, uh, put the uh, polygon for ground. These two polygons are both ground. <coughs> However, I didn't connect them. I draw two separate polygons. <coughs> why? Because if you connect them, the heat from here will, will transfer to this easier so they're both copper and uh, sure it does have the heat spreading much faster for this one but this 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 situation is much more critical right you'll make sure MCU much more unstable because your power that right that, that that definitely has much much more temperature tolerance than the MCU okay for <coughs> for this distinct uh, ground uh, <coughs> As I mentioned, you should <coughs> have different type of ground uh, for motor ground, uh, digital ground, and analog ground. Uh, the reason you may mix them because you want keep it, you know, uh, keep it, keep each. Uh, it's mostly keep the uh, <coughs> keep the uh, digital and the and analog power source as clean as possible because <coughs> your motor draws most of the power and it will, it will cause a lot of fluctuation. Uh, will uh, we'll 
will consequently uh, pollute those power source at 5 volts and 3.3 volts since the entire system is using one single battery system. That's why you should distinguish them and don't mix them, have the, but have them connected until the, uh, <laughs> until the, uh, until the uh, negative terminal of the battery. And uh, that's why you should be really careful with that. That's why I have <coughs> several sample pictures at the later page. So analog ground is temperature sensitive. Uh, so any signal chip for an uh, analog device, even the analog ground, <coughs> or analog power source, whatever. So try not to make that chase go across those heat intensive area. For instance, <laughs> like motor driver, five volts regulator. If yeah, if you, I mean, you have to make your uh, chase go that direction. Try to make a detour instead of go across underneath those heat intensive component directly. So it will help you to reduce your noise a lot. Does that make sense? Because car chase or copper, copper is metal, right? The resistance of the of the metal is, is proportional to the temperature, right? Okay. The high speed physics. Okay, so this is the picture for M graph. <coughs> so the highlight part is the chase for the other other network for M graph. Can I read the highlight highlight parts? Okay. So this is, this is just show you okay how it exactly looks like for M1 on the kinos. So this area there's only one chase. Go back all the way. Go back to the uh, negative terminal of the battery jack. So it's not even okay. These pad and these pad are ground. Some other ground, but they're not merging. See, they they have a space between them. They're not even merging. <coughs> see the best very last minute. Can you see that? Oh. Is that clear enough in the camera? Is the highlight part? Okay, I think so. Okay, let's see next page. Uh, digital ground. Digital ground most is, is, it covers most of the components. You can see this, this is digital ground polygon for the, uh, for the, uh, the LED display. Because this thing is also really kind of warped if you don't, don't put a polygon on it. Uh, MCU, <coughs> power regulator. You know, this uh, infrared emitter, digital ground. Digital ground combined here. Have polygon here, have single chase, go back, go back, go back, go back here. Right? On and it doesn't have any like it doesn't combine with any other sort of ground, such as the motor ground together until the very last minute. Like the way we see the way we see before. So the efforts that so the efforts that the motor grounds trying to prove prove those Digital grounds are, it just, the efforts are much, 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 much higher. Uh, so it will, it will much, much less likely happen that the, the motor grounds can prove those, affect those, those other digital grounds. And the same concept apply to the analog ground. Okay. Yeah. All right, uh, so this is an example of the analog ground. Uh, as you can see, I also highlight the choose right. analog ground. However, they're much thinner because they have less, much less power consumption. Uh, by the way, if you can see the delivery, uh, even though I highlight them, uh, you can see because uh, these are a infrared receiver or analog device and the gyro, and uh, that's pretty much all the analog devices. And that's why most of the uh, analog power chase are combining here. And there's really thin chase you can see. And like having this cross on this part, then go back to battery chase. Without it, uh, without uh, combining with all, uh, any other, uh, you know, motor, motor ground and the digital ground together. So as you can see, see all the all three grounds are really well uh, distincted and protected. So that's the that's the uh, that's that's very important for you to make your make your analog reading much much stable. And uh, see. See, okay, I could have had this chase go across this area, right? And it go across this area, but saying the reason I put polygon here because this area will generate heat, so I make a detour on the side. And this area might be hot, that's why I make a detour on this side. Even though it takes a little longer, but it's still affordable. Okay? Okay, uh, do you have any questions so far? Because uh, after this, this is the last lecture, and after this lecture, you will have sufficient guide for how to draw the PC, a uh, proper PCB for micro mouse. Uh, you will by just simulating this guide and uh, applying.
apply those techniques to techniques to try your PC reading. Any last minute question? All good. Okay. Uh, so thanks for coming today.